Hi everyone, today I am going to show you how to make these really easy slow stitched landscapes. My name is Sarah, welcome to my channel Sarah Humphrey Embroidery and I know we have lots of new people coming to watch the channel. We have been broadcasting for about 10 years now so it's lovely to welcome new people all the time. I'd like to say a special welcome to you and I hope you enjoy this video. Do go and check out our other videos, we've got over 340 to date I think it is. Um, go and have a look and see if there's something else you like and see what else we have got on offer. So I do get loads of questions, mainly from new viewers to the channel, um, asking, can you make me a video on such and such, or have you got a video on this topic? And 99% of the time, we do already have it covered. We already have a video on it. So the easiest way to go and check and see what we've got um, on offer is to click our little channel, channel logo. That will take you to the home page of our channel and you can search all the videos there. You can search them by the date that they went up in, either first or last, if you want to start at the beginning, or you can have a look in the playlist and search them by subject. We've got hours and hours and hours of videos so do go and have a look um, and see if we've got your subject covered that you're interested in. We do upload videos most Fridays, most Friday afternoons at 3.30 Greenwich Mean Time and if you click the subscribe button and that little bell there that will give you a notification of when we put a new video up so that you don't miss anything. And if you do enjoy a video and you would like to support this channel, you can click the little super thanks button. So I would like to say thank you this week to Beth, Ada and Laura for doing that. It looks a little bit like this here and they have clicked that button and they have shown their support and donated to us. So thank you very much for doing that. It's much appreciated. So having said we do upload every Friday, we have just had a couple of Fridays off. It's very rare that we do that and Jonathan and I have been away on a holiday and we've been cruising the Norwegian fjords which were absolutely beautiful. They were really stunning and I thought it'd be really nice to do a piece inspired by that but also something that you could easily adapt to somewhere you have been or somewhere that you live or something like that. So I'm going to show you how you can do that. So we are going to make this little picture that I showed you briefly earlier, something along these lines, a very simple one, and you'll be surprised how easily you can make something like this. And as I've said, I have made it into a picture, I've actually put it in a frame, but if you're somebody who likes to make something practical out of your embroidery and you're thinking, what can I make out of my slow stitching, do go and check out this video up in the corner here, 20 things that you can make with your slow stitching, and um, I think you will enjoy that one. So I'm going to show you this little one, but I did do a larger piece as well, inspired by my holiday. I wanted to come back and stitch um, stitch something from the fjords because they were really stunning. And I've made this larger one here. I'm going to show you this one in more detail at the end because I've got some images of the layers and the processes that I went through. And this one is a little bit more detailed than the smaller one. So we will come back to that one at the end. But I just want to show you the processes with a much simpler one first. So as I said, you can work from an image if you want, or you could just make a landscape up if you want to make a landscape up. That can be a lot of fun. So I did the larger one from an image, but then from that, I just sort of got the idea of what a landscape um, might look like. So I just want to run through that with this little one here in the frame. So you have to think of this in layers. So we have the background layer come back to the front, basically back to front, and you've got a sky at the top, then I've got some sort of mountains or fields or some sort of land. Then I put water in. The water looks really nice in these landscapes. It just separates it out a little bit and you can sort of see that depth in your image. And then I've got a bit of land again in the foreground at the front. So I've kind of got a, um, a background, um, a middle ground and a foreground. That makes some really nice layers. And then I just added a little bit of detail on this one. He needed something else to sort of be a bit of a focal point and I put, put a little sheep on there, a little wooden sheep that I had. And then I've just used some very simple stitching to sew these layers together. So I've layered everything in one go and then I just stitched through all of the layers and I've just got some very simple running stitch here in a variegated thread so the variegated colour of the thread gives me a bit more interest. I've done some different patterns in the sky to make it a little bit more sky-like. I've got a little bit of um, lace here to make a kind of a cloud in the sky and just some very simple stitches just to hold these layers together. I've done a little slow stitch circle little spiral in the water here, give a bit more of a watery effect. And again, just a little bit of a feature on the grass. And I've just done some straight stitches here to sort of represent a bit of a grass theme there. And that um, sits over the water. So you can again see those layers that I've got. So that's what we are going to do. So I'm going to show you um, how to get started. 
So you're going to need some fabrics basically for this. Um, I've got a big pile here that I'm going to use but I just want to talk briefly about where you can get some fabrics from because I've done lots of slow stitching videos before we have a playlist on those so do go and check that out if you're interested in slow stitching and you're wondering what the heck slow stitching is and you'd like a bit more of an explanation we've got one on that so do check out the playlist for our slow stitching videos and I made a little bit of an assumption really that I shouldn't have done that everybody has a stash of fabric and just because I've got quite a big stash and if you're a quilter you'll certainly have um, certainly have lots of fabric pieces lying around and a dressmaker too I've got loads of bits of fabric from leftover dressmaking projects but if you're not either of those you probably haven't got a stash of fabric so I just wanted to very briefly about where you could get some um, and the main place that you could go you can buy some new pieces but Go and check out the charity shops and the thrift stores um, and see what you can find in those. And a really good one to get is children's clothes because you don't need tons of fabric to do this. And I um, went to my local one and they had a big plastic bin out the front and it was like three children's garments for a pound, I think it was. It was ridiculous. <laughs> and they've got really beautiful little fabrics as a little kind of dress. But look at that beautiful print on that fabric there really lovely and you get quite a lot of fabric in just a little garment like that you can undo the seams and they've got buttons on the back so you get some buttons with it as well um, so you get quite a lot of fabric out of a very small garment so they don't need to be adult clothing and I've often bought adults one thinking oh, I really like that pattern I use that and then I end up just wearing it so <laughs> I like it so there's another little dress with a beautiful print around the bottom and obviously you've got the white fabric as well it's also got a little inner skirt so there's a load of white fabric there that you could paint on or you could print on um, and you could colour, you could dye it. So there's lots of little bits of it you can use. There's a little shirt here. Thank you. But look at the wonderful pattern on it as well. And again, that's got little buttons on it as well. So you've even got matching buttons if you wanted to use some buttons. So that's a great place to look for some really nice, pretty printed fabrics. Go and look in the guys' clothes section as well for ties. <laughs> Those Christmas presents that nobody really wanted um, usually end up in the charity shop in the thrift stores and these are often made of silk as well so this has got really beautiful material and you think well there's not much there but if you unpick the back seam it opens out to um, that size again so you actually get quite a wide bit of fabric you've also got a lining fabric in there that you can use as well with it and you get a really long piece and you only need some small pieces really for slow stitch you don't need that big piece so you could Raid the other half's wardrobe. Maybe he's got a tie he's not worn for a long time. <laughs> that he's not going to wear again and hope he doesn't notice you put it in his stitch. How many ties can you wear, basically? Don't need that many. Um, man's scarf. And the really interesting thing about looking in charity shops and places like that is you haven't got to think, do I like it because I want to wear it? You can look at it and think, would that be good for stitching on? <laughs> so this one probably not the nicest but it's got a really interesting pattern on it it's got a nice shiny fabric if you wanted a bit of texture in it you wanted to say something different it's got a, a plane of fabric on the background as well so you've got again your two fabrics that would go together it's got a little tassel on the bottom so that's really good as well so look for scarves and ties and look in the men's section the men's section you'll often get more neutral fabrics as well you might get lots of browns and greys so if you wanted something with that kind of tone on it we're going to check out the men's bit um ladies scarves as well a uh, sort of chiffon -y silk one that's been dyed that could be interesting this was a bag that i had that i used for, for ages and ages i used to love this bag <laughs> really interesting patterned fabric it's got some sort of woven bit in it as well really weird but it um, had a pen that leaked in the bottom of it and it sort of fell apart and had its day so I just cut the fabric out and I kept the fabric cushion covers this one is hanging around for ages and it's got these beads on the top and the beads kept falling off and I just got annoyed they ended up in the washing machine so I relegated it to the scrap pile and that's some really nice fabric that I can use there and I have indeed used I've cut the back out <laughs> Not sure what I used that for now, but the back is gone. So I've got um, lots of fabric I can use. I've got the beads as well, and there's even a zip if I wanted to use the zip on it too. So you just have to get a bit of inventive. You could look through your own wardrobe, see what you don't use anymore, um, and what could be used for slow stitching. So that is a great place to look. You can buy new fabrics, but you don't need much. So just buy a little bit if you find a nice pattern that you want, and you can always go and raid 
your friend's store if you've got a friend who does stitching go and raid their stuff they've always got little bits and bobs that they'll probably give you so just wanted a little give you a little bit of an idea about where you can get some fabrics from if you don't have a stash now what I like to do in my slow stitching is have a base fabric to work on and I often just pick a plain one. I like some sort of a blank canvas if you like but it doesn't have to be. If you want to use one of those fabrics and go straight onto that you can. I do recommend having something on the back of it though just to give you something a little bit solid to stitch into and to build up on. If it's too flimsy it can get a bit out of control and you might want to put a lot of embellishments on it. So I do like to put something on the back. I've just got a plain calico cotton. It's the cheapest cotton that you can buy. It's really good. This one on the top is a cotton. It's one of our bio washed cottons and that's a little bit of an end of a piece. Like I say it doesn't have to be a nice fresh clean new piece of fabric. You can use any old piece of fabric as the layers if you want to. And it's a great way to use up little bits and ends if you haven't got any left. So I'm going to do on that size. You could make tidy little ones. They'd make really nice cards and really nice little presents as well. So you can do small ones. I'm going to do one at this size. So I've got my two layers of fabric to start with. And then I have got my pile of fabric that I'm going to choose from. Now I have just picked some things out. I have got a lot of fabric and it can be a bit overwhelming so I think if you just limit it down and get a few things out and make something from those because um, otherwise you'll be forever <laughs> choosing some fabric. So I have picked some kind of watery kind of mountain theme type fabrics. I've found some organzas which are really nice to layer up. You can put them over other things and they give a nice watery sheen to it. Um, I've got some nice patterned ones as well. Just little bits left over from something you don't need very much. That was um, a dress that I made. I've got some laces. I do like putting laces in these. They can look quite watery or like the sky or like the clouds as well. So a few bits of leftover lace in there. Um, that's a bit of tie fabric, as in men's tie that we've just talked about. Lovely bit of silk brocade there. Um, got some kind of lacy stuff here as well. So I'm going to pull a few of these out and I'm going to start layering them up. So I just want to show you this one here that's ready to stitch. So I have done that with this one. So remember those layers that I talked about. Think about the sky at the back and the foreground and then something in the middle and middle ground. So here is my sky. So I've got my two layers of calico there and just that plain white fabric just to give myself a canvas to work on. Then I put a piece of organza down for the sky. I've got a little bit of fabric. I'll just unpin that. You can see this was actually a map. It had it a fabric with a map on it, which I thought was really wonderful. And I've made the mountains out a little bit of scrap piece of that. And I've actually cut that to shape. You can start to form them if you want to. This is slow stitching, so it's about the process of it. It's about the feel of the fabric and the thread. I'm not worrying so much about what you finish. So don't think I've got to... I've got to cut these really accurate pieces out and I've got to make that particular mountain or I've got to make that particular rock or tree or something like that. Just remember it's slow stitching. It's about the process more than anything. So just have a little bit of fun with this. I've made a really rough mountain shape. It's not any mountain you would recognise. So I put a little bit of lace on top and that's been cut to the same shape as well. Then I've just got a little bit of that map fabric again. It's quite nice if you can just bring fabrics back in because that sort of ties the whole thing together. So you just need a few and just repeat them and that will give you a nice cohesion to your piece without having to really think about it. So there's a little bit of the map fabric again just to make a little bit more land. A little bit of blue cotton, that's just like that one for the water there. And then just some different green fabrics. I've got a quilting cotton here and this is a green silk here and I've just made some sort of land shapes and they've come down into the middle so I can see a little bit of the water and I just had a little play around with those and I took them on and off <clears throat> and then when I got a composition that I liked I have just pinned the whole thing together so we're not going to stitch it separately we're not going to do any complicated piecing or anything like that you can just pin it all as one piece of fabric and then we will stitch through that one piece of fabric and it already feels really nice to, to even with the pins in it 
um, you can sort of feel the thickness of those fabrics together. There's quite a few fabrics in some places. So I can already feel this is going to be really nice and enjoyable to stitch. So I'm going to do that process. That one is ready to stitch, but I just want to go through it so you can see me do that um, in action. So I've got my two layers of fabric. This is quite a small one. So I'm just going to think small scale and have a little route through what I've got here. So I quite like, this is a nice piece of lace that I've got. I thought that might make a nice sort of a sky effect. I'm not going for realism here. Just take a photograph if you want realism. And don't worry about the size of it. It's too long. I'm not going to cut it yet. I'm just going to layer these things up. When I've got what I want, then I can cut it to the shape I wanted. That makes quite a nice sky. So then I want some mountains. What can I use for mountains? You could just pull out a few things you like, actually. This one keeps showing itself. This is absolutely beautiful braid. I found this yesterday when I was looking for some fabrics and it's kind of one of those things, oh it's too nice to use and I'll use, save it for another day and it's been in here for ever. So this might be a nice occasion to use it. It's got some nice sparkly bits and maybe that could be good for some water. This would also make a nice sky. Maybe we'll try that one instead. You can just take them off and play around with them and just enjoy touching these fabrics. They're all different textures. They're really lovely to have a play with. And sometimes I think in our embroidery, we can get a bit detached from the process of it. We have it in a frame. It's nice and tight and don't touch it and don't get it dirty. And you lose that connection a little bit. So I really love this so to be able to just play a little bit. I could even put that on top. Um, got here so I'm thinking water let's jump to the water that blue is quite nice just for a watery feel and maybe that could go on top of it don't forget you've got your stitching as well so you can add detail you can add color with your thread so you don't need to get every color in I think that's quite nice watery things going on there what else have we got You can cut it to shape, you don't have to all be straight lines. That makes quite a nice mountain. Maybe we need something to separate these colours. What about a bit of organza? That's really interesting. A bit strong, perhaps. So a bit strong. That big enough? Just about. So if I layer that on top of there, I can just get a little bit of a blue theme going on. This is quite nice. This is silk tissue. This is, I don't know what's left over from, but it's <laughs> well and truly hacked. That one's nice. Let's put that one on. Again, not worrying about the size, just getting these layers. So if we did that one on top there, so we've got the pattern from that kind of lace coming through. I can see it through the organza. That's giving my sky a little bit of a blue colour. Got some mountains there. Need a bit of land in a minute. There's my water with that. I might just bring that down to there and cut that off at the bottom. So we need some shapes in here. <clears throat> Silks, Thai silk is lovely. We could just cut some little mountain shapes like I did here. Just some very simple curves just to give some mountain effects. So this, where's the edge of my fabric, is there. So it's not wide enough, but that doesn't matter. I can use a different fabric with it. This is also a tie, and it's the same pattern and the same fabric but a different colour. So sometimes if you bring the same elements in, if you use the same kind of pattern and material, it will kind of look nice together even though it's not the same colour. So I could do two different colours like that. I could cut this one in half and use that both ways. So I could have one that side and one that side. And then maybe just quite like that. So let's just fold that. That's roughly what that would look like. Lovely. You can see an instant landscape forming, <laughs> but you're not committing yourself. You're not stitching anything down or, you know, you can just take it all apart and 
There's a little bit of that map fabric. Paraguay. <laughs> Paraguay could go in the Norwegian landscape. Maybe just a little bit at the front there, just to add another layer. A little think about that. This is a nice woolen fabric. This is left over from a cape that I made. It's quite a strong colour. Um, just to get a bit technical about landscapes, the colours fade as they go into the distance, so you can see less of the colours um, and they're stronger at the front. So you could think about that a little bit if you wanted to as well. So I think we are nearly, oops, nearly there. I'm quite liking that combination. Got some ribbons as well. That's interesting. Like a little bit of sparkle. Anybody who watches my channel knows I like like a bit of shine. Could that go under there? That's quite nice. So I think what I'm going to do is cut these down a little bit and see what I've got um, and cut some hill shapes um, and then we'll go from there and see if it needs anything else. So I probably had just another five minutes to play with this really and just change this around a little bit. I've added another lighter colour in here. This was quite heavy on its own but I brought this in down here just as I mentioned to bring in those fabrics twice. That can just make it nice and cohesive. I think the word is. So I'm going to pin it all together now. This isn't the right size but I'm going to pin it first and then I'm going to cut it all to the right size. So just pin through everything that needs pinning basically. Try not to move it all. <laughs> Probably the hardest bit. I'm just pinning through all the layers so everything is held down. So as many pins as you need at this stage. So it's all held in place. Just one more in that little bit there. So I can sort of pick that up and it's not going to fall apart. My pieces aren't going to move. So then I'm just going to trim that to size. Not worrying too much about the edges. This is slow stitching. We don't need to do fancy edges for slow stitching. Oh, it's still sticking out a little bit, so I'll trim a bit more of that off. There we go. And I think we are ready to stitch. I'm just going to bring this one in at this point and just show you these two that I have made. Now I've got um, one set of fabrics that I have used throughout all three of these, actually my four of these. So I'm going to get some repetition in it, but don't worry about copying mine. Look at what fabrics you have got. How can you layer them? How can you shape them a little bit to make a landscape? You don't have to put water in it if you don't want to. If you live somewhere with a beautiful view over the fields, you could do that. So I'm just going to show you that one again. So we've got that lace under there. So the backing fabric, my kind of top fabric. You could probably dispense with that one, really, but I do like the nice feel of these. They come out really nice and solid. They've got really lovely feel with all these fabrics layered together. So that lace one there, I've got some little silk tissue on top of there to make that sky effect. I've got this lace that I've actually cut, so I've cut these pieces out. That was just a straight line, so I've cut those little shapes out. So they look a little bit like distant snowcat mountains little one there as well to give it a bit of shape. Then this Thai silk here, as I said, I moved that one there down to here. It looked all a little bit dark across the middle, so I just moved that one down, put a lighter green one in, I've just cut that one in a little bit of a wiggly line as well. Got my water, which is straight. Um, water doesn't go up and down hills. <laughs> so put a straight water line in, and that'll be a really nice feature right across the middle of your landscape. It really does look like you're looking out over the water. Got that beautiful sparkly trimming that has been lying around forever. Great opportunity to use up those little bits that you think you're saving for a rainy day. Now is the rainy day. Use them. And then a little bit of that tie silk at the front just to give a little bit of foreground. So it's all ready to stitch. So I'm going to just clear the fabrics away and we're going to look at some threads. 
So as with the fabric, I suggest with slow stitching that this is the opportunity to use up little leftover bits and pieces. Don't go and buy some nice new threads for this, unless of course you want to. You don't have to do what I say, you can do what you like. But it is a good opportunity to use those little ends up. Now, if anybody's seen my video on how to organise your embroidery stash, I'll put a link up to that one as well. You will be familiar with this tin. This is all my leftover little bits of thread. This tin was a bargain because it had a dent in it, so it was half price. And then I just literally, you can see that, and that more falling out, almost. Um, this is all the little ends that I can't be bothered to wrap. Now, I'm not a fan of those little cards, um, as you may know. They're absolutely great if you're organised and you want to wrap them all brilliant. Can you come and do mine for me, please? Um, and I'd just rather put them in a tin and then I can just have a route around. So if you've got an old cross-stitch project and it's got some leftover threads, um, you know, you can just bung them in as they are. And if I just want a bit of a colour, I want to do some sampling, I want to do a bit of slow stitching, I just dive in here and use these because otherwise these are not going to get used. Anything that's in a whole skein with the label on goes in another drawer um, and I do keep those organised, but these are literally the leftover bits. So I have already just had a little look through and pulled out some colours. I put them on the top and I've just again picked colours that are similar to the ones I've used on my fabrics. I've got some blues and some greens and some browns. You could use some sparkly threads if you want to in the water. Um, you can bring all sorts into it. So I've just picked a few colours out. Just pick yourself a palette, if you like, a palette of colours. Match them to the threads if you want to, if um, to the fabrics if you want to. If you didn't have a colour fabric you wanted, now is the time to bring that colour into it. You could put some summer flowers, flower meadow at the front of your scene and you could pick some really beautiful pinks and make yourself some flowers. So it really is your choice. And there is a million combinations of this, by the way. <laughs> you could you could play for hours and make some nice different designs up. So just have some fun with it, coming up with whatever design you want. I think that's enough. It is nice to get some of these used so you can see how that sort of palette works with that. I've picked that really bright green if I want something to go a bit zingy. I might not use half of these, I don't know yet, but I've got my choices there. I don't have to go back and make more choices because now I can just enjoy this process of stitching all these layers together. So you can do one of two things at this point. You can baste all of these pieces together if you want, or you can just go straight in with the pins. Now, I know some people who do slow stitching like to get all these pieces together and fixed together, and you can take the pins out and you've got that fabric feel. Um, I'm a little bit lazy. And I'm just gonna go straight in um, and just start stitching straight on. So you can do whichever one you like. And I do just wanna mention as well, um, when I was just tidying up a bit, Jonathan said, oh, but you didn't iron, <laughs> you didn't iron your fabric. <laughs> I did iron them previously. I ironed my big, my big pile of fabric. Um, we are slow stitching. We're not worrying about edges and seams and all that sort of thing. But I do think you should start with some flat pieces of fabric. I do like to iron my fabric. And start with them nice and nice and flat. And then you can see what they're going to do. If they start all scrunched up, you might get something really creative. But it might do something really weird as well. So I do recommend ironing them before you start stitching them. So let's pick out a thread and get going. So I want to get these held down as much as possible. So I'm going to stitch across the main element. So I think I'm going to stitch straight across this bit first and then probably across the water and then around here. And that will sort of hold everything together and then I can work into that. So I've just got a white thread here. Do I want a cream one or a white one? I think I'll go with a white one. This is a stranded cotton. You can use any thread you like. You can use perlays, you can use silks, linens whatever you want to use. This just happens to be something that I need to use up. So um, fingertip to elbow, good length of thread. Go a little bit longer if you want for slow stitching. We're going to do really simple stitches. This is about this process and about enjoying the action of stitching and of creating and not worrying about too much about what your end result is. I'm going to just half it and use three strands in it. This is quite a small piece. Six strands, I think, is going to be a little bit bulky and I'm going to fight the fabric. And it's supposed to be nice and relaxing and mindful. And I don't want to be fighting my material. So I've just halved that. I'm going to use um, an embroidery needle. 
or number seven. I can thread it. I'm just going to show you how I'm going to start. Now I have put a little knot in the end there. If you follow me on my um, other stitching videos, you'll see I'm not a fan of knots. We make a waist knot, we do some starting stitches and we cut the waist knot off. Don't like knots on the back, but we are slow stitching. <laughs> So I'm not going to worry too much about that. We've got enough layers to hide it. I've made a nice small knot there. So we're just going to hide that knot in the in the layers. So I'm going to start this. I've got all of these layers, which is where these two layers come in handy now. And I could just do straight in from the back and it sits on the back. Um, but I'm going to do a halfway house. So I'm going to go between so that knot will sit in between the fabric layers so you don't get them on the back. If the knot is on the back and it comes undone, the idea is it could come undone on the front as well. So I'm hiding the knot, which gives it less less chance, less likely to come undone if it's hidden between the layers. So there's my knot inside. Let's just brush that end inside like so and I can just do a little stitch on that and that just holds that in place that's nice and secure the knots hidden inside it's not going to come undone and then I'm just going to start with the simplest of stitches so I'm just going to do a running stitch I'm just going to go up and down and I'm going to follow the line of this piece here and just stitch all those layers together and when you've done that you can take a pin out so nice small stitches just enjoy how that feels. It's nice to hold it in your hand and not have a frame and be all tight and you get a nice tension when you hold it in your hand. You're not pulling on it too tight. If you do struggle with your hands by the way, if you do have pain in them, you can put this in a frame. You can do stretcher bars and pin it to some stretcher bars. You know, it's, <laughs> it's no point doing it if you're not comfortable. That's not going to be very mindful at all. So do what you need to do to stitch it. But I do quite like just holding it in my hand and you can see I've got it resting on the table I've just got my hand underneath I'm not kind of all tense when I'm holding it I'm just nice and relaxed I'm just going to stitch along the edge there up and down with my stitches stitch those together so great um, if you don't have loads of stitches in your stitch bank <laughs> And you can still make something really beautiful with just a few stitches as well and good to do with grandchildren if you've got grandchildren nice easy stitch or maybe if you're losing your sight a little bit or some movement in your hands this is a nice one to do there's lots of reasons to do slow stitching it's really good for everybody and i've really enjoyed learning this and doing this has been good for me just to relax a little bit and enjoy the process of it rather than worrying about the end result and when I get to a pin I can just take that pin out and the idea is get rid of all the pins and then we've got this nice piece of fabric to work with so I'm just going to stitch all the way to the end I'm going to do um, the water as well and then I'll show you another stitch that you can use if you want to add another one in so my little landscape is coming together now I have sewn um, so I went over the little mountain, snowy mountain range there and I've gone along the water as well and done a few little stitches in around here and along the bottom. So that's holding that really securely. And you can see I've taken the pins out as I've gone along. So anything with a pin in it is still not secured down. But I just wanted to show you another stitch that you can do. So if you've got lots of stitches um, that you know that you want to use you can put whatever you like in slow stitch whatever you enjoy stitching I wouldn't use it as a place to learn something new <laughs> this is supposed to be mindful have a little sampler we've got a video all about sampling and how to do that and why you should all be doing it um, practice new stitches on a sampler and um, stitching slow stitching do something that you already know and just enjoy that actual act of stitching I would say but I'm going to just do another very simple stitch because you might want to make a slightly different effect it's really super simple so it's just going to do some straight sort of satin stitches and I thought with this little bit of land here I would make it look like it's got a bit of grass on it so you kind of got a little bit of depth and it looks like it's over the water and you've got those layers and it's so easy to do so I've just come up inside that fabric there I'm just going to stab down there and just make some little sort of tufts of grass if you like 
So I'm doing a kind of little group of them. Little tufty bits of grass and just stabbing straight down and that will start to hold these fabrics together as well. I will need to put stitches in to hold everything so if the grass doesn't hold down here I'm going to just put another stitch in to hold this together. You want it to be nice and secure, you don't want it all falling apart. So I'm just going to come up in there, stab down into that silk, just make these little groups of green grass, just overlapping those fabrics. I love this sparkly one underneath. It's so happy I used that one. And I've still got a little bit left as well for that rainy day. <laughs> I love the rainy day. So sort of groups of three is quite nice. You don't want them to be uniform though, so then you could just jump along a little bit and just put two in. Don't overthink it. We try and plan it all, then we're not slow stitching. We've gone into something else, which is perfectly okay, but we are doing some slow stitching, so just enjoy the act of feeling these threads and fabrics in your fingers. It is really nice, I do love it. It's, uh, it's definitely good for me to do this. Let's put a little long one in there, that little bit's grown a bit too, <laughs> a bit too much. And then I'm running out of thread, so I'm just going to turn over on the back. We'll have a look at that in a second and show you how I finish it off. So that's what I have stitched so far. But I'm just going to hide the end of this. Now this is the great thing about all these layers of fabric now is you can just hide the end. So I'm just going to go in between the layers. Just make sure you don't come out on the front. Weave it in between a few. Pull it through like so. That is not going to come undone. Cut that off. So it is nice and sort of neatish on the back. We're not worrying about whether it looks the same on the back, but I just finish it off securely. I don't like things coming undone. And you can just see where I've stitched. So there's that mountain bit there. There's the water. And you don't need to stitch because we've stitched through all the layers together. I don't need to go along underneath and stitch that water down and then stitch this one on top. I'm just stitching everything together in one go. So I've just got one layer of stitching, which is why that blue water stops there. Because now I'm going to continue with this grass, got some more green here. I'm going to continue around there and that will secure that one. I will do something along this one as well, because that's the only bit that's not currently held down. And then I just have to think about the edges. So I'm going to go along here and I might put an interesting, I'm still going to do running stitch, but I might do it in a bit of a swirly pattern to make it look a little bit like the sky. I'll see when I get there, but that needs holding down because there's nothing holding these layers at the moment. So I will do the top and then I will just make sure I've done the bottom as well and everything is secure. And then we will come back and we will have a look at that. So I think I've done all the stitching that I am going to do. I've had a very pleasant half an hour just <laughs> sitting stitching that by myself. Um, so I'm just going to show you quickly what I have done. So everything has been sewn down. I've put some extra stitches along the bottom here. They look a little bit like lapping water and um, I've just taken those up into the this nice sort of braid here just continued the stitches in these are the grass stitches that I showed you earlier um, I've just done the running stitches over the hills just to hold those down and I've done a little bit more of a spirally kind of pattern in the sky look a little bit cloud like um, and I've gone quite close to the edge I want to get this stitch down at the edge if I can just to make it a little bit more secure I haven't worried about this bit it's only short but I have gone down here and along the bottom um, just to make sure that's all stitched in nicely and if I just flip it over and show you what the back looks like you can see the stitching a little bit more clearly so there's the water on the bottom these are the hills and there's what I've done in the sky in the mountains so you can do as much stitching as you want you can keep going with this if you want to if you've got other stitches that you know that you want to use, you can put in lots of texture. Just keep on stitching as much as you want. I'm going to stop there. Sometimes I find if I just carry on, it gets a little bit dull and it all neatens out a little bit. And I quite like that sort of freshness of it. So I'm going to stop there. But what I do think is it may need just a little feature, a little feature piece in it. It does look beautiful as a landscape, but I found these little things in my crafty stash I've got some little wooden pieces and I thought well maybe they look quite nice on it so I thought I'd try a few so I've got a little moose here um we did come across a few not real ones 
with stuffed ones on walls but there were a few of those and I thought he looks quite nice he's sort of calling out over the landscape I thought he was quite nice but the other thing that I remember about Norway is it's got thousands of islands literally I think thousands and thousands of little islands and there were lots of dwellings on them and you get a tiny little island and there was a house on it and you said well who lives there so I've got some little houses they're not very Norwegian but they're quite sort of cutesy and I think they would work so I did think I could put a little house on this and this could be a little island with a dwelling on it a little who's living there kind of thing and then I've got these little wooden fir trees so it could be just something like that in the fir trees and that just adds a little bit of a feature to it you can put whatever you like on your slow stitching you can put broken jewellery on it we've done that in the past in previous videos you can sew buttons on it you can sew beads on it you can just go for it whatever you you see that you like if you can stitch over it or through it <laughs> you can put it on so I think I might put these on it might go a bit cutesy but I'm not worried about that let's just go a bit cutesy just to show you what you can do with it really um, I'm just going to sew it on I think with a colour that will blend in you could do it in green for the trees and make the a feature of it but just for the sake of getting it finished so we can get this video up I'm just going to use this colour and I'm just going to sew over them so the house has got a little button fastening so I can just go over that a few times and the trees I will just go over the branches to hold those in place so I shall do that and then we'll have a look at that bigger one and just have a talk through how I made that there we go I am calling that finished I think that's quite nice so <laughs> nice little reminder of our lovely holiday in the Norwegian fjord so let's just clear this away and have a look at the other one so this is the first piece that I actually did when I came back and I was inspired by the beautiful views and I've actually done this one from a picture so I'll put that up now. So this is the photograph that I took and this is more about inspiration for this piece rather than necessarily copying it exactly. We're doing slow stitching, we're doing an interpretation of it, we're not doing a photographic technique but this was my inspiration of one of the fjords that we stayed in and this is my interpretation of it. Now the first thing you will notice is I've left a ship off. <laughs> I just thought this is about the landscape really the, the ship um, I haven't put the ship on but you could put a ship on if you wanted to and so this one is a little bit bigger which gives you an opportunity to do more stitching with it but I have done it in the same way so I've got my backing fabric there that's my calico cotton backing to stitch through and then I have got a plain piece underneath that or did I just use the backing right so the piece I've got under that is actually this um, mountain piece of fabric so this was a piece that I made with some friends and we had a little go indigo dyeing um, and how to make some different textures and this is the fabric that I um, used for this and I thought it's just got real mountain look about it <laughs> well, that'd be perfect for the mountains but I've made it the same size as the whole thing so that is like my layer to stitch onto that's like my blank canvas if you like so it doesn't have to be plain um it's nice plain if you've got fabrics that are see-through and you want it to be a bit brighter underneath but i've used this one all the way through so that's my second layer there and it's a little bit thinner here actually you can feel it it's not quite as dense there and um so i've layered these fabrics up so i'll put some photographs up of the layering and show you that so this is the first layer um, with this um, dyed fabric this indigo dyed fabric and then I've just layered it as I've shown you with the small one as well these um, this fabric there's a bit of lace going in for the sky I've used um, the shape of that to inform my sky now and then I've got this water layer this is a nice silk as well and um, a cotton for the front um, piece of land the foreground of it and just some little layers in between um, this is a bit of see-through fabric here I just wanted to make the water a little bit darker and just get that sort of feeling of the different um, <clears throat> the different depths of the water if you like the different kinds of water and just to make that a bit more interesting it's a bigger design you can do more things like that you can sort of vary your fabrics a little bit more I've got some layers on top of as well as some organza here so there's this plain silk underneath I just I think I've got a piece of that but it's a plain sort of turquoise silk and then just these organzas on the top there's actually three colours there I'm not worried that it's not a long enough piece I can just stitch over it and hold that down there got a little bit of lace as well under here just to sort of 
kind of signify that there's something on the other side of the waters and the mountains don't just stop there's like a pebbly beach or something like that and being really quite free with my ideas now I'm not worrying about recreating it exactly and then this was the water was kind of lapping this was this little sort of bit of land that went out to the water you could walk out onto this here and just sort of indicate a little bit of water lapping at the edge there and then I made this kind of path here with a little bit of lace and I've embellished this quite a bit so if I just flip that over you can see all the stitching on that so lots of running stitch just I love running stitch just to hold it together it works really really well let your fabrics kind of do do the bulk of the work if you like um, but you can see I've got other kind of stitching going on here as well and you can see the sort of path and the line of the water in the mountains I've done some stitching in the mountains as well so you can see how much stitching I've actually done on that and then I've added in some details so some extra stitches so I put some French knots in here so this was quite pebbly ground to walk on it's sort of the, the, the bed of the fjord I suppose um, without any water on it so this is quite pebbly here so I've done some French knots here and some straight stitches just to sort of indicate that this path is going across it and then I found this amazing <laughs> these mailing sort of pearly bees now this was a necklace um, that broke um, and you just keep all that sort of thing keep all your broken jewelry lost earrings I've got so many single earrings and you can use them in your slow stitch and I just thought they were really nice not that the beach not that the front had these great bees <laughs> great big pearls on it or anything but just to sort of indicate a little bit of a rocky foreground and something at the front more detail at the front will really give you those layers and give you that depth in it and then uh, less detail at the back and that will just makes the back fade away a little bit so just a little a little small detail about how to add some depth into it but otherwise um just lots of lots of stitching lots of straight stitching i've used a variegated thread in the water just for a little bit of interest try to bring this dark up into here a little bit as well just these small details and as I said before you could decide how far you want to go with it and how much stitching you want to do if you're enjoying it you can just carry on stitching so I hope you've enjoyed that little bit of slow stitching and maybe you're inspired to have a go at your own landscape pull some pictures out pull some fabric out have fun playing with the threads and the fabric and see what you can come up with and I mentioned earlier that video 20 things to make with your slow stitching so if you want some other ideas of what you can do with this you can check this video out up here that's got lots of ideas for you if you've enjoyed this video do give it a thumbs up that's always appreciated and I will see you next time